everyone. My name is Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about nature and the environment around us. We'll start by reading a story together, then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today, we're going to be reading a story called My Friend Earth. If you've joined me for We Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see lots of different clues on this cover. First, I see a person here in the middle, but I notice there are some unique things about this person. That there's grass along their hair. It even looks like there's tiny little trees sprinkled all throughout. I also see lots of other plants and animals. See a monkey, a bird, see some dragonflies, a frog, another bird, see some water and some plants around. What do you think the story might be about based on what we can see? Let's find out. My Friend Earth, written by Patricia McLaughlin, illustrated by Francesca Santa. My Friend Earth wakes from a winter nap. What noises or sounds do you make when you're waking up from a nap? If you'd like, we can try some of those together. Maybe you'd like to stretch your arms really high if it feels comfortable. Maybe you bend from side to side. Or maybe you take a big yawn with your mouth wide open. <sighs> How does that feel? Let's keep going. She hears the busy spring sounds, the farmer's hoe tap tapping in the garden, the cause of crows. What are the sounds of spring where you live? She sees the little, the silent seed, the spider spinning silver, the robin and the wrens. And the large, the long winged albatross crossing the sea, the mole tunneling in the underdark. An albatross is a very large seabird and sometimes their wingspan from the tip of one wing to the next can be 10 feet long. That's as long as a female boa constrictor. She guides the chimpanzee to her night nest. And the zebra baby to find his mother in the hundreds of black and white striped mothers. She tends the prairie where sun-dappled wild horses run through grasses that swish against their legs. The 
tundra where the reindeer graze for moss, and the glistening ice where the young polar bear pads on mittened feet. What do you think we might find below the ice in this water here? Should we dive in and find out? Let's see. She guards all the creatures in all the oceans. The black manta rays sleek like shadows. The shining parrotfish. The tiny krill who swim with millions of other krill to look big and the whales who are big. My friend Earth pours the summer rain to fill streams flowing down mountains, through the fields, to the rivers, to the sea. Sometimes she pours too much rain, flooding towns and meadows and roads until she dries the land. Sometimes she blows fierce autumn winds, sweeping the limbs of trees and shingles from the roofs of barns. Until she stills the wind, so red and orange and yellow leaves float to the ground. When cold comes again, my friend Earth sprinkles the snow, whisper silent, covering the dens where the baby black bears are born in soft darkness drifting over the icy pond where the turtle sleeps in mud, settling into the empty nests of birds. We've seen how our friend Earth creates lots of different environments for us. Wet and rainy, or snowy, or windy, or sunny. Let's think about making a movement inspired by your favorite type of environment that the Earth makes. Do you have that environment in your head? If it feels comfortable, you can make a movement inspired by that environment. Maybe your fingertips come up above your head and they sprinkle, wiggle down the rain and the snow. Or maybe your arms become trees in the wind and they blow from side to side on a windy day. Or maybe you like the sun and your arms come all the way up overhead to make a big shining sun. What kind of movement did you decide to make? Under the white, the silent seed is cradled in the dark soil, watching. waiting to fly up again in the warm, bright sun of spring. The end. I invite you to think about your favorite part of the story and talk about that with the people that you're with. We're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. Let's imagine how we might get there. Since we're talking about nature and different environments today, let's imagine different environments that we might travel through. Are you going to travel through a hot, sandy desert and feel the sun shining on your face? Or are you going to travel through a wet rainforest and listen to all the friends that call that place home while you're walking? Or are you going to travel through an icy tundra and all there is to see is snow and ice for miles and miles. You decide. Once you've decided, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going. Whew. 
that was a really interesting journey today, depending on which environment you decided to travel through. I'm really glad that you made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're going to be doing an experience I'm calling our Mindfulness Minute. Mindfulness is taking the time to slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing. Since we're talking about nature today and all that it has to offer, we're going to be taking a journey through nature and making some mindful movements along the way. You might recognize some of these movements if you joined me while we were reading the story. If there's any movement that doesn't feel comfortable, feel free to move in a way that does feel comfortable to you, or you can just skip it. Okay, to get started, we're going to get into a comfortable position. And we're going to begin by taking a deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouths. Let's try that one more time, but this time let's do it a little more slowly. Ready? In through your nose and out through your mouth. like, you can close your eyes while we go on our journey. We're going to be taking a journey through a forest today. Imagine you're in a forest among all of these beautiful trees. How do you feel? Let's take a listen and see if there are any friends that we can hear who call this place home. The wind has started to blow. Let's raise our arms up above our head and sway from side to side as if we were a tree blowing in the wind. Now, let's take a look, another look around. Is there anything that you smell in this environment? Uh-oh, what's that I feel? I think it started to rain. Take your fingertips up above your head and wiggle them as you bring them down as if the rain's falling. Let's try that again. Up and wiggle down. I think the rain has stopped. And the sun is coming out. Let's bring our arms above our head as if they were a big bright sun. Maybe sway from side to side, imagining what the sun might feel like on your face. Let's make all those movements together. Arms up above your head and sway from side to side as if you were a tree blowing in the wind. Now bring your fingertips down and wiggle them as the rain falls. And arms above your head again into a big sun. Let's take one more deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouths. If your eyes were closed, you can open them. How did that journey feel through the forest today? Thank you for taking a journey with me. I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a close look at this work of art. What do you see? Let's take a look at all the sides of this sculpture. What new details can you see now? This is a monkey mask made by a Mumuye artist from Nigeria. It would have been worn during performances for initiations and harvest rituals. When it was used, it was worn with a partner wearing a bush cow mask. What materials do you see being used here? What 
items are from nature. This mask is made from wood, fiber, and raffia. Raffia comes from raffia palm trees and the veins that make up their leaves. People all over the world use raffia in rope, baskets, textiles, and many other items. How might this mask look and feel different if the raffia cape were removed? Imagine if you were to wear a mask like this one. How would you feel? Let's see how another artist created a work of art using natural materials. Take a careful look at this work of art. What do you notice about this object's shape? What do you notice about its designs? Now that we've had a closer look, what do you wonder about this object? This is a door board made by a Kanak artist from New Caledonia. It was carved from the hollow trunk of a special hardwood tree. Panels like this were attached to the sides of the main doorposts of the community leader's large circular house. Where do you see materials from nature in your home? Both of these artists use materials from nature to create a large part of their design. What materials from nature inspire you? What would you create inspired by those materials? If you'd like, you can talk about your ideas with the people that you're with. Now that we looked at some art together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. So travel through that hot desert, or hike through the rainforest, or brave the icy tundra, and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making mixed media collages using items from nature. We're going to collaborate with nature to make our artwork. So to collaborate is to work together on something. We are going to get inspired by what nature has to offer us, such as a leaf, a stick, a rock, or a flower petal, and use those shapes and patterns as the base for our design. So maybe a petal or a rock becomes the perfect shape for a cloud, or a stick becomes the string of a balloon. The possibilities are endless. So we're going to need a few items for our art making project today. First, you're going to need something to create your collage on. So I'm going to use a piece of cardboard today, but you could use any kind of paper you have or other kinds of cardboard that you have around your home, just something, a flat surface to work on. Then we're going to need some scissors, some paper glue, some drawing materials. I'm going to use crayons today, but you could use colored pencils or markers or paint or anything that you have around your home is great. And then we're going to need some items from nature. So you can go to your park or the sidewalk or your yard to find some of these items. We want to make sure that we only take things that are already on the ground unless we have permission to pick something. So I found some leaves, some pine needles, a pine cone, these are some um, pieces that fell off of a bush. I found some rocks. So there's lots of different options um, for items from nature that you could use to make your collaboration. So to start, we're gonna have to first think about what items do we have that might have shapes that might remind us of something else. So I really liked this piece of a bush, this kind of branch from a bush, and I thought it looked like a really big tree. So I think that might kind of start the base for my design. So I was thinking about maybe creating a scene from a park. And I also found some rocks. So I thought that kind of could be like a cloud, maybe in the sky. I think some of these leaves could almost make good kind of ground cover or act like they were the ground. And I'm not sure what I want to do with these pine needles yet. The idea might come to me later. And that's going to happen too. So maybe you start and you have a really specific idea of what you want to do. Or maybe once you get started, things will just kind of come to you or you'll get inspired as you're working. So there's lots of different ways to work and create. Um, so I'm going to get started by attaching some of my items here that are going to 
serve as the base for my collage. Now when you're working with items from nature they might be a little more difficult to attach than other items that we might work with like paper or fabric or things like that. So we might need to have a few different methods to attach things. So if you have tape and glue sometimes having both can help. If you only have one you can always kind of work with what you have. So I'm going to start with some tape to see if that will help um, me attach my my branch here. And this might be a little too tall for me so I'm going to cut it. And if there's any kind of cutting of branches that you need to do or other kind of heavy duty things like that you might want to ask a grown-up to see if they can they can help you. So I'm just going to use this clear tape and just see if I can attach some tape to it to my branch here to see if that will help it hold. You can always kind of play around with it to see what works and what doesn't. And if you're having trouble attaching something, you can always make a collage that isn't permanent. So maybe you just arrange some items on the page. You can also photograph it and that can be kind of the way that it lives on instead of um, trying to attach it. So that's another way to do it is to kind of to just arrange your objects and take a picture of it. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. That's not going anywhere. Now I really liked this shape to kind of think about this as maybe a cloud in the sky. Maybe this really big rock is going to be my bench that maybe someone in the park might sit on. So I'm going to do a tape roll to try to attach this rock here. So that's another strategy and sometimes it might not work. So see this isn't really sticking very well to my rock. So this might be an instance where maybe I try to use some glue or maybe it just becomes something that sits there and then later on Later on it will um, it will get photographed and then go away. So I've got my glue, got some nice sticky glue there. I'm going to try to attach my rock there to see if that will help it stay put at least for a little bit. Okay, oops. Now I have some leaves and I think those are going to be good for my, my ground here. So I think I'm going to go attach just a few more items with some tape. So I taped down a few more of my items. I kind of have my ground cover with my leaves, my bench, that's my rock. I have my trees from my branch pieces. Um, and then I was looking at these pine needles and kind of trying to figure out what they might be. And I was thinking about birds flying in the sky and how sometimes um, when you see them, you just see them for a minute and they just kind of look like a V in the sky. So I thought I might do that with my pine needles. So I'm gonna cut them. So I just get these little tiny pieces and then I will attach them. So you can be inspired by so many different shapes from nature and there's so many different things to find that are just right outside your door. And all of these shapes and objects could become so many different things. So there's no right or wrong way to do it. You're the artist, so you get to be inspired by the material in whatever way that you think. So I think I'm going to attach these with some glue. that have become my flying birds and now I think I'm ready to add some color with my drawing materials so you can use any drawing materials that you have at home I'm gonna use crayons today but this can be kind of a fun way to add to your collage and your nature collaboration to add in some things that you might not have been able to add with the nature materials that you're going to use so I think I might um, add in some cl other clouds and some other kind of colors um, that I might be missing from my materials. Okay, 
So I added some color to kind of add to my ground. So I was thinking about that time kind of in the winter, right before spring, when the grass is still kind of yellow and brown, but it's starting to peek out and get a little green, and we still have some evergreen trees that are green all year round. Um, so I have my leaves that are kind of creating that ground for me. I've got my bush pieces that are my trees. I have my bench in the park, my cloud from a rock, and then I made my flying birds with my pine needles. So that is going to be our mixed media nature collages collaborating with nature. Thank you for joining me today here at We Wednesday. We hope you had fun. I wanted to show you another example of a mixed media nature collage that I made. So this is the one that we made together. This is my park scene with my leaves and rocks and branches and pine needle birds and lots of other materials that I made that we did together. Then I made another collage, this time on a piece of paper instead of cardboard. And I used some of the same materials. I used pine needles and pieces of a leaf, but this time I decided to really get inspired by the shape of the pine needles. I was thinking about long, tall grasses that you might see in a beach, um, or like a beach environment. And I thought some of the shapes of these leaves reminded me of seashells. So I thought about kind of seashells poking out from the sand. So there's so many different scenes that you can make with natural materials. We would love to see your artwork. You can share them with us on social media and use the hashtag STL Art Museum and We Wednesday. We hope to see you next time. Keep on creating. Bye.